Yes, uh, the Word of God said He would share secrets with us. Yes, but secrets are shared in quiet times, and I'm afraid we're so busy. Uh, I don't know about other pastors, but the only way I've made it, and we have made it through, fill it with victory, with joy. It's still a joy to serve people. It's still a joy to be the pastor here for over. 30 years this year. Um, it's just been an amazing ride. But our secret here is my personal quiet time. Yes. I mean, without my quiet time and the presence of God every day of my life, uh, we wouldn't have that peace. And when the storms hit, if you've had that quiet time and yes. you're hearing his voice and you're hearing the secrets that he's telling you, you can go through any storm when the storm comes, not if the storm comes, when the storm comes, we've yes. got to be at quiet time. It's got to consist of, you know, the word of God, the rhema word, the locust word, the spoken word, the written word. It's got to consist of Bible reading. It's got to consist of prayer time. The prayer is communication with God, just being with Father God. And I'm so afraid. I, I mean, I've seen a lot of pastors and in, in my I grew up in church. My daddy was a pastor. And I did not want to pastor because he was. He had many, he had two churches he pastored for about 35, 40 years. And, yeah. and they was hard places. And I said, Lord, I, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to make money. I'm going to, I'm just going to supply the financial needs of the church. I'm just yes. going to be, I, I tried to cho choose my own gift. I wanted the gift of giving just to supply and just to fund ministries like yours. And, and we was doing so well at doing that. And all of a sudden God put a roadblock in our way and uh, called us to preach. And, and uh, I'm telling you, when I came to this church, I thought it would be five, maybe two to five years. Now it's been 30. And I can honestly oh. say that it's, it's been such a great, great ride. Such yeah. a great ministry should be fun. Absolutely. It should not be Training. It should not be. You shouldn't even be striving. If you're going to no. strive, strive for the presence of God. Yes, you sir. shouldn't have to strive for the problems. Yes, we're going to have problems, but we know the God that's bigger than every problem we're going to face. So, wow. so I just urge ministers and the lay people to have that daily quiet time. It is the yes. foundation of your life. That is the truth. Wow. Let me tell you. So I've discovered this: that unless you know who you have believed. In the, in the calm times, when the storm hits, you're in trouble. And God, God has taught me over the years, 50 odd years we've been ministering now and, and mission work for 30 of those 50 years. And sometimes, mm. sometimes you honestly don't know where the horizon is. You don't know the storms and the waves and the, and the howling gales. I mean, we, we, are, we send tens of thousands of dollars every month to keep all that you're watching on TV open and, and alive and, and thriving. No and there are, times, there are times when I sit down and think, my God, how does this all work? And the minute I think about it, the minute I, I, I get myself looking at the wind and the waves, you begin to sink. Just like Simon Come Peter, the, the wind and the waves are there to tell you that there's a storm. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus, what does the scripture say? Looking at the Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen yes. to me, brother. Listen to me, sister. Watching just now, this isn't your job to keep going. You're in his hands. It's not how tight you can grab onto him. It's how much grip he's got onto you. When I took my yes. kids when they were younger or my, my, my grandkids today, and I hold their hand, let me tell you something. They, they, are, they may think they're holding my hand, but the truth of the matter is I've got a grip on theirs. And this thing doesn't depend on you today. Your church does not depend on you. This is Come God on. is in charge. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So you're part of his building progress. Whether you're a, a person that goes to church or you're a pastor of a church, you have the, the, the wondrous point that God has chosen you to be part of the answer for today's ills. And you will not answer people's needs around you by living in defeat yourself. And I've learned in my life personally that victory is a choice that I can make. I can look at the storms or I can look at the Savior. And I choose to look at the Savior. Hallelujah. No doubt. We're, uh, the body of Christ has never been invited to a pity party. 
we are invited to a praise party. My and Lord listen, that does not mean storms are going to come. Troubles sure. are going to come. Absolutely. But listen, we, we have the answer. We are the answer. We are the hope. We are the we are the light and the salt yes. of the earth, and we can't yes, lose sir. focus, especially right now in the troubled times that we're in, Philip. Yeah. We cannot lose our focus. I, I love what Bishop said yesterday. Where you're getting your information from it is forming you. you got to was make that sure that you're hearing the word of God. Boy, that was powerful. Whew. What a powerful word. We got to be oh, careful. Oh. I, I just preached a sermon, part two of this time. I entitled it, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. And uh, it's a story of Jehoshaphat. We all know sure. the story. He was a, what was he, the third or fourth king of Judah after the nation had been divided. And, and we know the nation right now. Our nation is in division in many ways. Mm -hmm. But there is an answer even in the middle of division. Absolutely. And Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat took time to seek the Lord. He took time to get an answer. And I know many people in the body of Christ, they're praying, they're fasting the first 21 days of the year. But listen, friends, you can pray, you can fast, but yeah. until you add the third element to it, it's not going to work. And the Lord began to show me in um, in Second Chronicles that after they prayed, after they fasted, they got direction. Yes. And you got to have direction for the season yes. that we're in. Yes. Direction without obedience is not going to work either. So that right now, I encourage the body of Christ, pray fast, but make sure you add obedience yes, to sir. what we're going to do in 2021. <laughs> we or we're going to repeat 2020. <laughs> We were out yesterday, and um, we're, we're, we're in this new um, circum environment. And um, my son has a thing called Waze. It's a it's a GPS system, and uh, so we had to go yes. somewhere. And he and he put this address in this GPS system, and uh, we just we followed, we, we obeyed what that was saying because it knew more about our environment and our circumstance more than we did. Sometimes it will tell us there's a roadblock coming up or there's a, a delay coming up. Take exit 26 well, and we go off and we don't see anything further than the instruction that we're in now. And if, you're, if, if you trust God, he knows where he's taking you. He knows where you're on. going. But what you're going to do is this. You're going to say to him, I'm going to move in obedience. I'm going to go as far as you tell me to go and, and trust him. By the time I get to where I can see, more instructions will come. And um, this, this Waze gadget that he has on his phone, I guess we all have them. I just never use them because I've got him. He's my Waze, ga Waze gadget. <laughs> but what I'm saying is God, God knows where you're going. Watching me today, there are people, and you're thinking that God doesn't know who you are, where you are, and where you're going. I've got news for you. He knows your ends from your beginnings. He's the Alpha. He is the Omega. And what he's asking you to do is to move. If the devil can freeze you where you are in your circumstance, he will take you down. But if you say to yourself, I'm moving forward, I'm going forward, I'm taking the next step, then divine impetus, impetus and, and revelation comes just like our ways machine. And, and it took us through all these back roads. And I'm saying, Andrew, do you know, are you sure you know where we're going? And he just pointed to the machine. And on, the, on this little screen was the map as to where we're going. And I've got news for you. You are not by yourself. A power way greater than ways is working on your behalf. And he has got everything planned for you. You've just got to trust him and let him be in control of your life. Yeah, no, we can trust a wave system or a GPS system. We can surely trust the God who yeah. created the heavens and the earth, <laughs> who created us, who chose My us, God, who, yes. who paid Yes, who paid a high price for us. Yeah. He's, he's got a high price. He's going to take care of us as long as we walk in obedience to his word and just also his spoken word. Listen, Holy Spirit is not here to make us feel better. He's here to lead us and to guide us into yes. all truth and to yes. give us direction on what to do when we that's don't know what truth. to do. Oh, that's great stuff. 
You know, Bill, uh, a couple of things I saw in Second Chronicles I'd never seen, and I've been in church my whole life. But in verse 3, it says they begged God for guidance, and he told everybody to fast. And then it said in verse 4, people came from all the towns of Judah, came yeah. to Jerusalem to seek God's help. But I've always read that verse a little different. I was thinking everybody come. And the Holy Spirit said, read it again. He said, some people from all all the towns came. So there was Whoa. someone from every town who come, but everyone was not there. And listen, wow. friends, listen, pastors, we need everybody from every denomination, from yes. every walk of life. We, we shouldn't judge each other by our race, our color, our nationality, no, our sir. social status. We need people from all the towns. Yes. 